good afternoon. Today is the 13th of September and it's time for yet another not particularly interesting, very vague and uh, probably quite boring vlog. So I was going to make this video about something else entirely but something happened last night. There I was um, at about quarter past nine, um, merrily making my way back from a Volvo Owners Club meeting at a place called Southwick, which is near Portsmouth, um, listening to Bell and Sebastian or something like that, and um, just enjoying the noise of my five cylinder Volvo white block engine on some country roads on the way to the N27, when I came across um, a car on its roof on a country lane in a place called South Borhan, which is in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It turned out that um, it was a 69 registration Fiat 500X and there was a, an 18 year old girl inside the car. Now I wasn't the first one to get there, there were a few other people who got there before me. I was only literally a couple of minutes after it had happened. Um, there was a chap there who initially I thought he was covering the car or something because there was an orange light on the top of a van but I couldn't quite see what it was or a flatbed truck I thought it originally was but it turned out he was just one of the first people there um, and uh, he just said that some people had you know already turned around and you know left um, after seeing what uh, was on the road which he was a bit you know miffed about so I you know in my dutiful way wearing my brown corduroy jacket um, on the way back from the Volvo Owners Club meeting, um, I actually took my car out of the way, put up the warning triangle on the bend to try to stop other people kind of, you know, <laughs> crashing potentially into the back of the car upside down. And uh, by that time, a couple of other people were arriving, and um, you know, some of them were inside inside the back of the car and wondering if they might be able to, you know, possibly get this lady out which it wasn't actually possible to do that because when the car had gone over the front two doors had sort of um, got crushed and they weren't able to be open we did try to open them but they couldn't they weren't open the lady herself was actually she was all right um, she was obviously really shocked and she was hanging upside down which isn't the best really for you know feeling sick um, but she had very only very minor injuries from all the glass which had shattered and the road next to the car was um, completely covered in debris and, and glass. So I was thinking about myself, you know, other than like establishing, you know, what state this girl was in and, you know, putting the warning triangle up, what, what was I supposed to do? And um, I wasn't really sure. I know that like, you, if you are involved in an accident, you you can't just leave you have to stick around um but i didn't really know what else to sort of do and some people were just kind of leaving um other people were saying oh you stop them leaving you know like this is a serious accident things like that um what is it that you're supposed to do if you're in my situation well you didn't witness it actually but you are a couple of minutes after it occurred so the girl who was behind the Fiat 500 X, she was driving another car and had managed to stop safely before hitting it when it went over. She had called the emergency services immediately and um, they kept her on the phone for about 15 minutes until I think the first people to arrive were the police service. Um, and, you know, it's pretty much a situation we required all three. It was fire service for cutting the lady out of the car. It was the ambulance to see if she was okay and the police to sort of close the road off and things like that. So um, I think she went through this sort of triage and she, she got very shaken, this, this girl who made the call. She was very, very shaken. She was only in her early 20s herself. And, uh, you know, I, some of us were just making sure she was okay because she was in quite severe shock having seen what had happened. Eventually, they told everyone to sort of get out. It took a while to arrive. They got everyone to clear the scene and get her up the car because there was still some chaps in there you know, we were trying to work out what to do and obviously we worked out straight away that we weren't going to move her from where she was because the car wasn't in danger of um, 
fire and it hadn't ended up in a lake or anything like that, so we didn't need to try to get, pull her out. Um, just to leave her there because she might have a spinal injury or something. I'm not sure she did because she, she eventually just stood up and said sorry to like most of us. I don't know what she's apologising about, but I suppose the only person who caused the accident was, was her driving because she apparently hit a kerb and like valid kind of knocked the suspension out of the car to the extent that it then hit a bank and rolled over. Um, this is what the girl in the car behind the seat and. Um, so I stuck around for a bit, but I realised, you know, I'm sort of in the way here. And really, in these situations, they're not really interested in being someone like me, who was, you know, quite way behind seeing what had happened, but I didn't. And so, you, you know, I kept out of the way of putting a point triangle up uh, and checked to see what condition she was in. But that's really all that you're supposed to do. I. I Earlier on today, I spoke to Mr. Colton, rubbish mechanic, who, for his massive qualifications he has, is actually also a trained accident investigator, so I thought I'd speak to him about it, and he said, I'm not under any obligation in that position to actually stick around. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a good thing to do to put the warning triangle up to possibly alert people who are coming around these dangerous bends that something happening. Um, and just to make sure that like someone's calling emergency services, which they were, um, someone else then called the ambulance whilst the girl was still on the phone to the police. And, you know, that's really it. You know, most of the time they just want you sort of out of the way. So you don't actually have to feel guilty. If, if, I, if I just left the scene, after I sort of briefly perceived what was happening, that would have been not wrong. I just chose to stick around because I thought actually that um, you know I could be of some use, which I wasn't really particularly. Um, I can tell you the Fiat 500 X is an extremely safe car. Like you know, you see a barely a scratch on her, and it must have been quite an impact. And uh, most of the car was pretty intact. The the light stayed on, which was really useful for seeing what was going on. Hazard light stayed on. The interior light stayed on. There wasn't a fuel leak or anything, there wasn't a coolant leaking anywhere. I mean, the car was totally destroyed, but the tailgate was very carefully taken off by the fire brigade, and obviously that will end up in Silver Lake, um, what's probably dismantling, I'm sure, at some point soon. Um, but, um, yeah, he, he said, you know, you're not trained in your situation, you didn't first-hand witness it. Um, the only thing you might want to do at some point to know what, to do, you know, what the correct thing is, in those situations to take an emergency first responders course if you want to. I mean, you don't need to in your situation. You don't need it for work or anything. But maybe I should consider that at some point because it's actually useful for many other situations. I've heard it useful in um, when I've, I've been doing diving qualifications. I've heard it useful in, in motorway accidents, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I don't plan on ever witnessing something like this again. It's not something that any of us really want to see. But rather than just standing around feeling a bit useless or just clearing off maybe in the future if I if I knew a bit more what to do it might be a bit more of a useful thing to, to me and anybody else who's actually involved um, but uh, yes I, I feel like I've been educated and informed over the last sort of um, 24 hours and I just hope that none of you get involved in anything like this or even worse but if you but if you do, it's amazing how well these modern cars do protect you. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video in the comment below, and um, I shall see you again soon for more surprisingly deep music.